What's up everyone, back for another vlog, and in today's vlog, I will be showing you the Shelfie beers that I'll be reviewing for the month of May 2023. So, Shelfie beers are exactly how they sound. They are reviews of beers that I can easily grab off the shelves here in the Buffalo, New York area, and I try to get a decent mixture of beers from some of your bigger regional, national, and international breweries. And I post Shelfie beer reviews every single Tuesday and a Friday of each month. And in the month of May 2023, there are nine Tuesdays and Fridays. Therefore, there are nine beers here in front of me, and they're in order of how I'm going to post them over the course of the month. From your left to right, this will be the first Shelfie Beer Review of the month, and this will be the last review of the month. So let's go over these real quick, although I do want to uh, say that uh, at least I'd say about four of these, maybe five of these, were inspired from viewers, supporters, and friends of the channel, which is pretty cool. And I always say this, if you want to recommend a beer or suggest a beer for my channel, feel free to do so. Post in the comment section, send me a message. I try to uh, grab all suggestions from viewers and review them. Eventually, I might not get to them right away, but I do have a list that I try to uh, you know, grab beers from that list as often as I possibly can. And a lot of them end up being Shelfie Beer Review, so I just wanted to say that before we go over these. So, the first Shelfie Beer Review of the month comes from Lagunitas, and this is the Waldos Special Ale, and this is the 2023 uh, release. So this is a triple IPA, comes in 11.7% alcohol by volume, and this is special because this is going to be a re-review on the channel. Now, I very rarely do re-reviews of beers on the channel. The last time I reviewed this one was back in 2019, so about four years ago. But the reason I'm re-reviewing this is because a, a viewer of the channel, a friend of the channel, a huge supporter of the channel, Billy, wanted to see me review this year's offering. Therefore, the least I could do for Billy is review it. He's hooked me up with so many beer mails. He uh, comments on almost every video. He watches a lot of them. So, Billy, this one's for you. And I'm curious to see how I'm going to enjoy this one. Now, the one I reviewed in 2019 was just over two weeks old. And this one right here is just under two months old. So I want to see what like five, five and a half weeks of age will do to this one because I've never had it a couple months old. It's usually pretty fresh. And uh, this year's offering, I actually found the hops. They're using Yakima Valley, um, Citra, and Mosaic. They say the dankest Citra and Mosaic. This is typically released every single year for 420 day, April 20th. You know what it's all about. So I'm uh, really looking forward to that one. Can't wait to get into it. Next, we have from Sierra Nevada, we have their Summerfest. So this is what they're calling a refreshing summer a lager. Comes in at 5% alcohol by volume. And it's funny because if you go to their website or even on their Instagram, they say this is new. Uh, this is basically a returning beer. Now, it might be a new recipe, but it's a returning beer. They used to, I think, uh, release this one every spring for summer. And I think they last released it in 2020. The last two years they didn't release it, so they brought it back this year. Now, why I think it's a new recipe is because the hop bill is definitely different, and they used to call it a Czech-style Pilsner, and it is now referred to as a German-style Pilsner. So I'm curious to see what this one's all about, and I've had this one before. I don't remember much about it, only because um, back when I used to drink this uh, occasionally in the summer, I wasn't a huge lager guy. Uh, I, they were fine, but now I'm really enjoying lager, so I'm curious to see what this one's all about, so I can't wait to uh, revisit that one and properly review it. Next, we have from New Belgium, we have their Danger Beach IPA. So this is another one of their India Pale Ales with natural flavor. So they have Juice Force, which I've reviewed on the channel, and Fruit Force, which they call a Fruit Punch IPA. I haven't reviewed on the channel. Now, I wanted to grab the Fruit Force, but the freshest uh, can I found of it was like four and a half months old. I want to review it a little fresher than that. So I picked this one up instead, although in the future I will be reviewing uh, the uh, Fruit uh, fruit Force. Um, both of those, the Juice Force and the Fruit Force, a lot of people, I'm kind of in agreement with them, but they say that, you know, they basically don't really taste like beer. It kind of tastes like a tropical fruit juice at like 9%, especially the Juice Force, and I would agree with them. Um, these whole IPAs with natural flavors, uh, Southern Tier does their Juice, uh, juice Jolt and their two-time Juice Jolt. I haven't been a huge fan of them. I think they taste uh, 
quite good actually, because they taste like fruit juice, but they don't really have any beer properties and they're gonna get old quickly for myself, I can already tell. But I wanna check this one out, it's like one of the newer releases. They also came out with a Blood Orange Pale Ale that I would like to try as well, but I saw this one relatively fresh, it's just under two months old, so we'll get to it as soon as possible. I'm curious about that, but I will be grabbing Fruit Force at some point. Next, we have from Yingling, we have their Lord Chesterfield, uh, Chesterfield L. So this one was recommended to me by another good friend of mine and viewer and supporter of the channel, Ryan. So um, when I was asking folks for uh, beers to recommend for Macro Monday, uh, Ryan recommended this one. Now, Yingling's not technically macro, although kind of, but not really, uh, especially according to the Brewers Association, but I wanted to grab and review this one anyway. And it's not that I won't review um, non-macro beers on Macro Monday. I do macro-esque beers as well, but I just thought this would fit better as part of the shelfy beer review regardless ryan recommend to me and i have not had this one long time i don't even remember what this tastes like honestly i don't remember anything about this but we're gonna give it a gold uh go not gold and on the back it just says chetty chetty for short lord chesterfield yeah. anyway next we have from allagash we have their hop reach ip so this I believe is their first year-round IPA, 6.8%. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to read much about it right now. It's relatively fresh. And honestly, I can't remember uh, any IPAs, if any, I've had from uh, the um, Allagash. Uh, I will say that I've had, I'm trying to, the reason why I kind of stumbled in my words and just kind of blanked out there for a second, I'm trying to remember the hot four beers I have from them. I had their Haunted House this past year in 2022. And that was like a hot forward. I think it was like a stout or a porter. I think it was just, they just call it like a black owl, but it was kind of like a hop forward kind of darker beer. And then I also had a mosaic Brett session ale many years ago from them. Outside of that, I can't really think of any hop forward beers I've had from them. So I'm curious to see how Allagash does with an IPA. I don't know if this is hazy. I don't know if it's like an old school, just American IPA, but I'm excited. Next, we have from Boulevard, we have their proper pour. So this is an Imperial Stout double aged in Cabernet wine barrels and whiskey barrels. It comes in at 12.6% alcohol by volume. And this is another beer that was inspired by the aforementioned Ryan. I saw him check this in on tap about, I'll say about maybe a month ago, and he loved it. He gave it either a 4.75 or 5 out of 5, and I was just like, dude, that sounds awesome. If I find this locally, I'm picking up and reviewing it, and lo and behold, that's exactly what I have done. So I can't wait to get into it. Boulevard makes some really good beer, especially their barrel aged beers. They're reasonably priced and usually pretty good. And you got a double barrel beer here. And I paid like $4.29 for that bottle. And it's like $16 a four pack. So like, eh, such great value. Anyway, next we have from Victory, their Motel Paloma. So this is a grapefruit summer ale that comes in at 6% alcohol by volume. And this is a cocktail inspired summer ale. So much like Dogfish had Citrus Squall, this is a Paloma uh, cocktail inspired beer. And I wanna give a shout out to a uh, viewer of the channel, Chaz. He actually was the one who recommended this one to me. He um, said that he picked up the Citrus Squall in a mix pack from Dogfish Head, but he also had this and he thought this was better than the Dogfish Head one because it was lower ABV, it was a bit smoother and kind of more crushable and kind of what you want out of what they're calling a grapefruit summer ale. And I kind of understand that. So I'll be curious to see if I enjoy this one more than the Citrus Squall. Citrus Squall was really good, tasted like a tequila cocktail, which I imagine Paloma is. So this at a lower ABV might be more in my wheelhouse. So huge thanks to Chaz for the recommendation. I can't wait to get into that one and see how it is. Next we have from Vosteina, we have their German Pilsner underneath it says a premium beer. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this because it's been a while since I've had this one. But if you're talking about like, you know, imported international beers here in the US, Volsteiner's uh, Pilsner, very easy to come by. You pretty much can get it at like all grocery stores, at least in my area, it might be different for you. And I cannot wait to revisit this one. Haven't had it in a hot minute. Now, I also want to point out that I was looking for the Dunkel. Uh, a viewer of the channel, Josh, and a couple other people actually have suggested a review of their Dunkel, and I have not seen it recently, so we'll see if that's something I can uh, pick up and uh, give a proper review of, but I thought this would uh, make do for the time being. We'll do the Pilsner and see how it is. And last, but certainly not least, from Rogue, we have their Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout, the 2023 release. This is a barrel-aged Imperial Stout coming at 13.7% alcohol by volume. And when we uh, do the review, we'll go a little bit more in depth. But this is um, aged for nine months 
in their uh, Dead Guy Whiskey Barrel. So I was going to pick up their Shakespeare uh, Stout Nitro, which is literally right next to it on the shelf, but I was like, eh, this is like $4.99 a can, and it's not a huge bomber. It's, it's one of these thin energy drink cans. I was like, I want to review that. So maybe we'll do the Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare uh, Stout Nitro uh, next month or in the future, but I wanted to go with this one because why not? Sounds like it might be pretty fun. So again, nine different beers. If you can get your hands on any of these and drink along with the reviews, I know uh, some of you out there do that with my reviews. And I love getting comments that are like, oh, I'm drinking this right now. And uh, I totally agree with you, or I disagree, or I'm somewhere in between. That's the whole point of having, to me, a beer tubing channel is the interaction. So hearing people drinking what I review is awesome, especially if you post in the comment section your feelings on the beer, your opinions. I'd love to hear from people out there. Um, if you uh, aren't going to do that, but maybe you are going to pick up a couple. Which are you going to pick up? What, what ones are you? Here, here's the question. Of these nine beers, what are you looking forward to the most for uh, my reviews? What, what are you looking forward you know, to watching when I post? To me... I can't really say I have a strong allure to any of them specifically, but I'm curious about the Rogue, just because I don't think I've had a barrel-aged beer from them. I also want to see how this compares to the Citrus Squall, but I haven't had this in such a long time that I'm like kind of curious to remember what it drinks. I'm kind of, I, I would say I'm not looking forward to this one the most. I, I wouldn't say that, but I would say that I'm kind of, I'm nervous about the New Belgium one. And the Summerfest, I'm curious to see how much different it is in this I think this is going to be delicious, so I'm into it. So anyway, I appreciate everybody stopping by for another vlog here on the Beer Patrol. Like I said, be on the lookout for reviews of all these beers on Tuesdays and uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Maybe I said Tuesdays and Wednesdays. If not, whatever. Tuesdays and Fridays. You guys know the drill when it comes to uh, Shelfie Beer Reviews. So appreciate everybody stopping by. To the next one. Cheers.